morning, everybody, and welcome to Erner Barry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Today is Tuesday, September the 12th. Hope your day is going great so far. This morning, we are happy to have with us today both Courtney and Dylan, and uh, they are going to enlighten us on their respective fields of knowledge. This morning, uh, I had a little snafu when we're trying to get our video together and, and covering content, but I want to make it clear. Courtney is going to be covering the recent rally in the feeder cattle futures, and she's going to be speaking to that. It's uh, something I'm looking forward to as a consumer because I want to know what, how it's going to impact my dollar down the road. Good morning, Courtney. Good morning, Russ. Thanks very much, and I hope everyone's doing well this morning. Like you mentioned, the feeder cattle futures market has been on fire recently, and it seems like the sky's the limit. So today I'm going to touch on the flurry of fundamentals that might be impacting what traders are thinking at the moment. This is futures pricing available on our Comtel platform that's derived from bar chart. And this particular chart is a one month chart for the October fetal, feeder cattle futures contract. The October contract is currently the most actively traded contract. So there might be some more focus on this particular month. And we can see that it's been on a <clears throat> pretty steady upward trajectory in recent sessions. Uh, for three consecutive sessions now, those feeder cattle features have hit fresh contract highs. So these are prices never before seen in the life of that contract. And there's several supportive fundamentals that traders might be eyeing. Uh, first things first, a feeder cattle is a young cattle that is mature enough to undergo backgrounding for uh, fattening for slaughter. So that's what the current contract we're looking at is. And there continues to be many bullish fundamentals surrounding the feeder cattle and cash cattle markets in general. Taking a look at Cattle Facts' six fed steer price on an average basis, we can see pulling back to 1995, it continues to trade at historical all time highs for most of the year so far. And again, this is a continuation of those tight front end cattle supplies that we've been talking about for quite some time now. That's still very much in play and that's expected to remain the case heading into 2024. So it seems like these cash cattle prices could see even more support in the weeks, months, and possibly years out ahead. And this can translate to, like you were mentioning, Russ, how it ultimately impacts the consumer dollar and their purchasing behavior since these prices will trickle down to the wholesale and retail level. Speaking of the wholesale level, we can see that these um, beef production has been sharply lower year over year so far. It's down by about 5% year to date, and cattle slaughter is about 4.2% under 2022. So this has propelled the wholesale beef cutout higher, and it has taken on a softer undertone after Labor Day. But that being said, we can still it still remains at a second seasonal all-time high, beat out only by 2021. So these higher wholesale beef prices are having an impact on those retail prices, and it seems like costlier steaks could be on the horizon for quite some time here. Uh, something to note is that while input costs do remain high for cattle feeders, including building costs and labor costs. They are seeing some reprieve from feed costs. This here is the futures symbol for the front month corn futures contract on the Chicago Board of Trade. And we can see it's been on a steep downward trajectory so far this year. It's down by about 29% year to date. And it's much, much lower than it was this time last year when we were looking at almost $7 per bushel. Now it's sitting more at about four dollars to five dollars per bushel so this is lowering those input costs for feeders and many are still wondering when we're going to see that herd rebuilding take place as of now it still doesn't seem like cattle feeders are retaining their heifers on a large scale one of the factors is being ongoing drought conditions this is the u.s drought monitor and we can see these dark red areas indicate severe to exceptional drought in many of the nation's major cattle producing regions, including Texas and Oklahoma. So if we look at these drought conditions and available forage availability, it might not be widespread enough to encourage those heifer retention efforts. And that'll be the major turning point when we see the change from contraction to expansion. So that's something we're monitoring in the weeks ahead. 
And thank you, Courtney. Always informative. Boy, I tell you, between the uh, feeder cattle futures and the production of beef, at least, I mean, 5%, that is significant. And it uh, doesn't look like at least the Russ Whitman household is going to be eating quite the number of New York strips going ahead as he would prefer. But anyway, always enlightening, Courtney. Appreciate your input. We heard Courtney use the phrase, sky's the limit. And it wasn't so long ago that maybe the chicken industry itself was thinking that, uh, well, a few items that we've been covering uh, maybe didn't have a limit. But Dylan, there seems to be a change in the weather uh, this week, doesn't there? Good morning, Russ, and good morning, everybody. That's exactly it. Um, we've uh, seen a fairly consistent uptrend on jumbo boneless breast for a while. And in a recent change of base, we've begun to see a little bit of a momentum uh, decrease over the past several days here. Yeah, of all the items on the chicken price sheet right now, uh, jumbo boneless breasts are certainly top of mind for a lot of players at the moment. Uh, and that's saying a lot considering we uh, saw uh, limited price changes, no price changes yesterday and even Friday. Uh, and there's quite a lot of uh, buzz of activity surrounding you know, seasonal items such as wings, tenders, even back half meats at the moment. So let's jump into boneless breasts really quickly and I'll show you what I'm speaking about here. Uh, so between the middle of July, which is when the, the price rally began to kick off for jumbo boneless breasts, and uh, where we presently stand, uh, this item has tacked on 60 cents per pound, which represents about a 33% increase in spot quotations. Uh, for perspective, and if we take a look at just that, that similar period, again, mid-July through uh, early September, uh, you can see where that seasonal trends uh, trends towards. Um, you know, over the past five years, on average, we have seen uh, spot quotations decline by about 27 cents per pound, 16% down between, again, mid-July and early September here. So seasonality, certainly not on the side of uh, the sellers at the moment. Um, and you can see where the, this seasonal trend ultimately directs uh, the prices towards, towards uh, the end of Q3 here. Uh, now, if we take a look in slaughter figures, uh, a very familiar trend over the past several years here, which would be a 4% cumulative advance in overall production. So this is taking into account the year-to-date slaughter figures uh, by headcount. Uh, and the jumbo category is up about 4%. That represents about 60 million additional jumbo-sized chickens being harvested so far this year. So that's certainly adding to the supply backdrop here. Another factor, and this really uh, drives home the points that uh, there's plenty of production out there, at least through the end of July, cold storage up uh, about 226 million pounds. That's a seasonal high. And uh, that also represents a pretty notable 22% advance above year ago level. So uh, at least at the, the end of July, tons of inventory in cold storage. Those are indications that that do suggest, or at least you know, um, suggest that there should be some uh, increase in supply, some seasonal trends developing towards the second half of the year. That being said, and one topic that we have discussed in previous videos has been hatchability challenges, which so far haven't really shown any sort of uptick. Uh, right now, hatchability is still in the high 79% range, and you can see where chick placements are headed. We have seen a multi-month year-over-year downtrends here. The most we recent weekly reading shows a 2% year over year dip here. So still, this does suggest that in the future, there should be some sort of moderation to overall headcount moving forward. Um, and this does seem to be backed up by the fact that the USDA's livestock, dairy, and poultry outlook Although it does show a slight year-over-year -year increase in ready-to-cook production expectations, uh, this number has pared back just a little bit in response to those declines on the hatchery side of the business. So where do participants go moving forward? There, there's certainly some push and pull there from the supply factors out there. Uh, but at least when it boils down to historic seasonality, it does suggest that the tail end of the year uh, could bring with it uh, some, some further declines uh, based on, on the history here. And thank you, Dylan. Of course, we'll hear from you again later in the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter is never particularly good to the chicken market. Maybe 2023 will be different, but we'll take it one day at a time. In the meantime, Courtney, Dylan, thanks for your insight today. And thanks to all of you for joining us on the Erner Barry's Tuesday Morning Market Roundup. Today is Tuesday, the 12th of September. Hope you all have a great day.